So that was the vector that called us forward. That was the great attractor that this humble monkey heard the call and set off across the plains of geological time seeking and finding this tremendous mystery. And I believe that this story has tremendous implications for our own lives uh, because we are highly dysfunctional as a society. Violence, sexism, racism, classism, linear thinking, reductionism, denial of the spirit, all this messes with our heads and our happiness. And I, I think that it is not necessarily so, but that we, it was a narrow window that opened for us. Because I am not suggesting that monkeys make fine company uh, back as you look through the geological record. The fact of the matter is male dominance hierarchies occur in primates right back to the squirrel monkey type. The primate style is a style of male dominance. But sometime let's say 100,000 years ago to, let's say, 12 or 10,000 years ago, there was a chemical fix. There was a, an intervention in the ordinary hierarchy-forming tendency of these evolving primates, and we actually created not a matriarchy, not a shifting of one master for another, but a partnership society. We were actually able, by forming a kind of quasi-symbiotic relationship to these mushrooms, and it was a very interesting incipient symbiosis, you see. It was a symbiosis of, of, of proto-hominids, cattle, grasslands, and mushrooms. It was a three species, at least three species, symbiosis. We were able to create a partnership style of existence, which is the uh, genesis point of our myths of paradise. This is why we have a nostalgia for paradise, a feeling that we fell into history, that there was once a golden age of balance and gender, uh, you know, reasonable gender dynamics and uh, community and uh, religion that was not simply moral prescriptions that cause neurosis, but an actual relationship to the living spirit of the planet. And this was achieved uh, through psilocybin and through the lifestyle that it reinforced because, recalling my little three-step process, the psychedelic aspect and the sexual arousal aspect were simply two ends of the same experience. The style of these early uh, nomadic pastoralists into cattle was orgiastic meaning everybody got together at the new and full moon and flopped in a heap. And these were, uh, these were groups of 70 or 80 people, small human groups. Now, what this was doing, this tendency toward uh, group sexual activity, an orgy promoted by the psilocybin in the diet, what it was doing was it was interfering with the tendency to stress male lines of paternity because you can't know in a society that has institutionalized uh, orgiastic sexuality, men cannot know who their children are. Women know who their children are because they see the children come out of their bodies and there's a bonding. But for men... The children are community property. And this, I think, was the link. Uh, and in the absence of psilocybin, 
you get a recursion back to the previous uh, mode of primate organization, which is a turf-guarding, territorial, egoistic style. And this is the point I really want to make, that psilocybin is a kind of inoculation against the formation of ego. It dissolved the primate ego, and it kept it dissolved until factors, which I'll discuss in a minute, factors limited the availability of the psilocybin, and then this atavistic tendency, the existence of the ego, returned with a tremendous vengeance. So what I, the implication of what I'm saying is that the ego, which grows like a calcareous tumor or an abnormal growth in the dynamics of the psyche, can actually be dissolved by repeated exposure to this boundary-dissolving psychedelic compound. Well, so then if things were so wonderful, why didn't it just last forever? Why did we fall into history? 